Howdy, welcome back to the shop. So the golf cart, you guys see me get it all the way up to the one point. I think I got it up to where it was painted and whatnot. Um, the reason why I haven't got that video or the series completed on that was because I never really did get the golf cart finished. So other projects came up. It just took, you know, got put on the back burner for a little bit. So recently I've been putting the body and stuff back on and I don't have it complete, so that's why I don't have the final video yet for that yet, like I said. But we was able to get it enough to where we could ride it around a little bit. And we noticed that the belt was slipping a little bit. So whenever I opened up the hood there, or the trunk, whatever, how you want to call that, it'd be the trunk, really. Well, there's oil everywhere. This might be hard to see, but um, I got the clutch and everything out, and this is what I was telling you. If you could take your fingers across that, you can see all the oil and it's all soaked through here. I mean, it's real bad. And this is what I mean by it was leaking. Um, there's even oil up along here and everything. And, you know, I can't have that, obviously. And then if you look up here, this is all oil soaked all the way across here. That's how bad that clutch was leaking. So um, I just wanted to kind of show you how bad it was leaking and stuff. You can see the spots on the ground there or the uh, concrete where it was dripping down after we had run it. So oil got onto the new belt that was on there and the clutch housing soaking wet. The secondary clutch is completely soaking wet. So we knew there's a problem. So I went ahead and took it apart, assuming that this O-ring was bad. And you look at this O-ring, <laughs> I can't find anything really wrong with it. There is a spot up in here that got pinched a little bit, but I really don't think it was leaking there. Um, these are a little bit of a pain to get on and off. So I went ahead and put this back on and put everything back together and fired it up without the belt on it. So it would just stay there and it was just spraying oil like crazy. So I tried using a flashlight to see if I could see it. I could see it was coming from the external part of the housing. So whenever it stopped, I turned the engine off. I could see a little bit of line of oil coming out of one spot. And so what I mean by that is this housing is cracked. It's cracked in three different spots yet to boot that I could find. I'm hoping there's no more. I inspected it pretty well. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's the crack. There's one there. Right there's another one. And the other one's up here. I marked it with a uh, red uh, Sharpie there so I could find them easier for myself. So the game plan on this is to probably repair it. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I got, have an extremely hard time finding these. So that's part of the reason why I think I'm gonna try to repair it. Um, so I found one on eBay and they went $375 for the whole clutch kit. This is the primary clutch. And I just don't see that spending that money on that um, especially if i can get it repaired last resort we can always just buy the one i'm hoping we don't have to so the plan is is i'm going to v groove this all these cracks and then i'm going to pre-eat a little bit and then we're going to try to take weld it back and then i'm going to try to get this in the lathe and uh, turn it back to what it's supposed to the problem i'm having is i can get my small lathe in here but i get a little bit too much run out not terrible it's actually probably good enough for what this is. Um, I'm going to try to get it in my big lathe, but these studs, I don't have a way to clamp it back here. I could clamp it on the outside here, and I thought about that because the main area is this O-ring groove. So I could clamp it on the outside of this and get all the way down to this last little bit and then clean that little bit up in the lathe, uh, the small lathe, I mean. So that might be the plan. If I can't do it that way, I'll just file it off and get it as smooth as I can by filing it. But I think I can get it in a lay some way or another. So enough said, let's get started on this repair and see if it uh, works and how it turns out. Okay, I just wanted to bring you in a real quick close up to kind of show you that you can see the crack right there. So we're gonna use a, a carbide cutter here and we're just gonna trace this out with this cutter and create a nice V groove and hopefully we can fill it.
see I'm trying not to get too thin down in there um, but it don't feel too bad it's the bottom of the uh, o-ring groove that I'm concerned with I'm hoping that it's deep enough there because if I get too much thinner I'm afraid that whenever I go to weld it it's just gonna melt right through I'm trying to avoid that but I can see the crack a little bit better now so uh, it actually looks like it comes over this way a little bit so we're gonna try to get it in there a little bit more Alright, you can see they cleaned up pretty well. Um, it's getting a little thin in there. I think it'll be fine still. Um, I'm going to get it fairly hot whenever I go to weld it. But um, let's get the welding stuff out and see what, see what we can do here. Well, I'm not sure how well this is going to go. Um, I just can't really get a good angle for the camera to get in here. So I'm going to hope that that works. Um, I may have to back the camera up some. I don't know. But first thing I'm going to do is heat this up just a little bit. And I don't need it crazy hot, but a little bit of heat really helps with welding aluminum. Right now we're sitting at, you know, 68 degrees in here. So. And that might be all the heat we need. It, uh, it's 100 and about 130 degrees already. So let's give it a shot and see how well it goes. Um, if I lose you or would drop the camera drops out, I'll just bring you back after I get it completed here. So I'm not sure exactly what happened. Um, I started welding and you could see it just, for some reason the camera just stopped recording for whatever reason. Um, it could be the, the field that's coming off the welder, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I know there are other people do it, but this first time I did it with a, uh, this TIG setup I got here. Um, so what happened is whenever I hit this with the TIG, you could see that crack open up quite a bit. Um, and what happened was I was trying to concentrate the arc on it to help give it a little bit of a cleaning action and you could see all this black stuff coming out and what I think it is is the there's probably the gear oil still in some of that crack um, you know I could cut it all the way through but I'd really rather not um, so I went ahead and uh, took my carbide tool there again and recut this out to help clean it up and then cleaned it up I sprayed brake cleaner down through the cracks as much as I could possibly get it in there. So I'm going to attempt this again. I will say uh, where it did weld in, this is the area I started in, it actually filled in rather well and whenever I was cutting it out with a carbide tool there was no porosities in there. So it, it did fill in very well. So I'm probably just going to go ahead at it and see what we can do again. So uh, let's get started again. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to heat it up with the torch just a little bit, get some heat into it because uh, aluminum boy, it likes to suck that heat out. If the camera dies out again, I'll just continue on and uh, you'll have to catch it up on the uh, backside. It's plenty hot enough.
So hopefully the camera caught that. Um, I had a hard time getting it to start for some reason. And it's, it's because of the setup have, I, ha I have. So um, basically it's an AC buzz box and I'm using a high frequency box on it. And sometimes I have a hard time getting it to start. Um, but it started laying in rather nice. Um, I'm probably gonna come back on this end here. I'm gonna flip it around so I can get it. But the reason why I stopped right now is I could tell it was getting hot. So I wanted to keep the heat off of this end because I don't want this end to fall off on me. So I think it's probably good enough to where we can start again. it's uh, started to melt away on me. So I found out what the problem is, is because it was uh, either sand casting or it's smothered in oil. If I can get that burn out, wire brush it, and then it seems to weld fine, but it's just taken a little bit. Um, it must be a dirty casting, I'm not sure. But otherwise, I mean, it's laying in and it's not looking terribly bad. I won't say great, but it's not terribly bad. You can see the one weld, it don't look terrible, it's not great. And there's the other one, the other one's on, uh, the third one's on the bottom, so I think this will work. So let's let it cool off and then we'll talk about getting it into the lathe and try to get it machined back. All right, guys, I got you over here to lathe. Uh, we was able to get it chucked up just like that, which I'm perfectly fine with because we can get all the way into the jaw, so it only leaves about a quarter inch. And like I said, I can get that on my other small lathe. Um, but just to show you, I got this down in pretty close. I'm sitting at right around 50 thousandths. This jaw, it's under, it's under about four thousandths. This in here is at 50 thousandths. And this in here is under. So these two jaws here are running good and these two jaws are running good. So. And this is pretty common with this kind of stuff. Um, it's not perfectly round because you can see it's not really a machine surface. It looks like they just cleaned it up um, from after the sand casting and cut the groove in it. It'll be fine. Um, this is just an oil seal, so it's not something crazy critical anyway. I did check the face. The face is running within about two thousandths. Um, this is the only face I have to go off of, so unfortunately, I mean, that's just going to have to be it. But like I said, it looks pretty good. So we are ready to go ahead and get started on cutting this down. Um, even if we have to hit this service and hit it five thousandths down, it's not going to be critical. Um, so with that said, let's get started on cutting this down. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and touch his face and clean his face off. So we need probably another five or ten thousandths to come off. Um, does look like I do have a low spot in this weld here. Um, we'll see what it looks like. If if it's not a problem, we're gonna leave it. So I'm gonna set my dial indicator down here, and then we'll come in another five thousandths.
Okay, it didn't clean everything up, but it cleaned almost all of it up, so I like it. Um, still wish that there would have cleaned up, but I think it's going to be all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw our chamfering uh, tool in here, and we are going to kind of break that edge. Yep, so, so we have that, just that little bit of spot right there. This one here is perfect. That one's perfect. So, um, let's start cutting on this face here. Okay, I thought I saw it hitting the surface already, but uh, I don't, it wasn't. Okay, we just touched there a little bit, and we touched there a little bit, and we touched there a little bit, so that's a good sign. At least we're touching in all, all three spots. Um, and we are really close. So I'm going to step back. Uh, maybe we'll take a couple thousandths in each pass here. And I'm extremely close. I'm hesitant to take any more off. Um, I think I might just stop there for now. And uh, what I think I might do is run some sandpaper on it here and see what it looks like after that. I don't know how well you can see it, but you can see where my repairs were and where it had sanded. I'm stopping there because that, I mean, it looks perfect. It looks really good. So let's get the um, parting tool put in here and let's get this uh, o ring groove cut. Now I'm going to do this by eye. Um, so I'm going to watch whenever it just touches the edge there, just touches the bottom and uh, touches this edge here, so. And uh, I don't know how, how well you can see it, but that looks like a good repair. So I'm gonna take this out, put it over in a small lathe, and we're, cut this uh, you know the rest of this welds down and uh, I think we're gonna be good to go all right guys so I didn't even clamp this in the lathe over there other than to sand it what I did was I used a file and knocked the the weld humps over on this then I just took sandpaper and sanded this I thought there's no reason to spend that extra time cleaning that up the cup that goes over top of this only comes to about somewhere in this range here so all this I didn't even have to clean up but I did clean it up so <clears throat> you can see it turned out pretty good I won't say it's perfect I do have a few spots there's a little bit of porosity in it I did check them none of them leak with uh, pressurized air or even brake cleaner or anything sprayed into it um, so I'm very happy with it but you can see this is one of the repairs the welds right there and I mean it looks great and um, this one here you can see it's right there this one has a little bit of porosities in it and this one has a little bit but not terrible so what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to fill these with JB Weld since they, none of them leak. Um, I just figured it's an extra protection. But otherwise, very happy with the way this turned out. It, I mean, if this, if, if I get this on and it doesn't leak and it doesn't spray oil everywhere, I just saved me 375 bucks right there. So with that said, um, thanks for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so. And I'm going to try to add a quick clip of the uh, golf cart running after I get this on. Until then, take care. All right, you can see this was a successful repair. There is no more oil on anything. Everything seems to be uh, working like it should now. Um, I wanted to get it out riding around and kind of show you that everything was working functionally, but um, we're having some weather conditions and it's kind of flooding, so I can't really get this in the yard because it'll just trash the yard. Um, so, but anyway, just wanted to show you this was a successful repair. So, again, Thank you for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. And until next time, take care.